Welcome to Tuesday, the 20th day of August 2024. This day with a podcast brought to you by ConverseCountyTourism.com. Beautiful landscapes, historic sites, and unique downtowns await visitors to Douglas and Glen Rock. Plan your visit at ConverseCountyTourism.com. Well, it's going to be more of the same. Really, we're just kind of going through summertime motions here of warm temperatures, occasional showers and thunderstorms, some days They'll be around a bit more numerous than other days. Yesterday was a day when thunderstorm activity picked up. Today is a day where thunderstorm activity goes down, only to go back up again during the time frame of Wednesday through Friday. So basically, more of the same. Now this pattern holds through Friday, then things begin to change, especially in the far west. For the Pacific Northwest, for a large part of central and northern California, then the interior, getting into Idaho, Nevada, getting into Utah by this weekend, and this includes far western Wyoming, around Jackson, Yellowstone Park, the southwest areas of Wyoming, into that Wasatch Front. This trough that's off the Pacific Coast slowly moves in. Now, it kind of runs into the high that'll be in the south central United States. That will slow down the front a bit. So if you're east of the Continental Divide, this cool front probably won't really affect your temperatures till late Sunday or Monday. But west of the divide, you'll certainly notice the cool down, along with some showers and thunderstorms along that cold front. Then, as we mentioned yesterday, another cold front will come in towards the middle of next week. So we're kind of stair-stepping down the summer heat with these fronts kind of knocking down high pressure. Every time it gets hot, one of these fronts are going to come on in, cooling things off a bit. And as we mentioned yesterday, as we get into late August into early September, that's exactly what you suspect. A lot of photos rolling in yesterday. Here's a great shot from the Casper Air Tanker Base. Firefighters there with, well, from the air. Thank you guys for uh, doing that service there in Casper. And you can see the beautiful shot of clouds there behind them. And those ended up building into some pretty big clouds, iridescent clouds this weekend near Glendo. And then, and this is from late last week, but this scene showed itself yesterday for sure of building cumulonimbus clouds by mid to late afternoon and evening, cumulus congestus, then into cumulonimbus. And then got a great video here of the three thunderstorms that moved through southeastern Wyoming yesterday. So for those of you in southeastern Wyoming know that it was one after another, and that happened elsewhere. That happened up in the western areas of South Dakota as the thunderstorms formed. They never really got too severe with some exceptions, especially up in South Dakota, as you'll see in a minute. But they ended up being really good rain producers. As you can see, the rain shafts, you can see the first thunderstorm developing there, second thunderstorm developing there. Notice the path and the formation of the thunderstorms were essentially in the same locations. And we call that training. Here's number three, where the thunderstorms will form and basically go over the same or similar areas. And you can get a lot of precipitation when that happens. Beautiful shot there near Casper of a beautiful thunderstorm and catching it just at the right time for lightning. And then we did see some severe weather. I said there was some areas that did get severe weather. Well, that thunderstorm that you can see right there ended up producing some pretty large hail around the Deadwood, South Dakota area. And then we've got rainbow photos. Of course, after thunderstorms like that, you're gonna get rainbows. And then you have beautiful sunsets like we had yesterday as the thunderstorms dissipated and headed off to the east all across the region. Some great video, some great photos here of a beautiful sunset. And then to keep the show going after this beautiful sunset, well, we had the moon. Now, a lot of you probably noticed the moon coming out, full moon, beautiful, very bright. And so that really showed itself. Yep, yeah, that's not the sun. That's the moon. Two shots here out of Wheatland. There's one and there's the other one. Here's the latest water vapor photo. You can see the intrusion of some orange fingering in. So that's going to reduce the shower and thunderstorm coverage. But there's going to be enough moisture around in the atmosphere. So showers and thunderstorms there. See this right here. Here's the next plume coming up out of northwest Mexico in the Baja. That's going to circulate here and will affect us for mid to late in the week with more thunderstorms. So it's basically the same pattern. Now I'm going to top, uh, talk about three things that aren't local that need to be watched 
This really didn't make the news very well, but uh, we had the, uh, in the Kamacha Peninsula, uh, over in Russia, we had a large volcanic eruption and the magnitude seven earthquake. Now this area is known to put up some big eruptions before, and a lot of volcanic ash, we'll need to watch this area before because high latitude volcanoes, latitude is really important. The strength of the eruption, how high the eruption goes in the air, the amount of ash and sulfur dioxide, is really important. So is latitude. High latitude volcanoes and low latitude volcanoes can affect the weather and climate differently. This ended up causing a lot of airline delays uh, because here's the peninsula right here where the volcanic eruption went on. So if you are trying to fly across the ocean, a lot of your flights, let's say you leave Denver, well, you got to go up first before you go down. Let's say you're going to Japan or maybe you're going to Japan from San Francisco. You're going this way. Well, we had red, red level advisories that did cancel some flights, had flights turn around because of that volcano. We'll keep an eye on it there. The sunspot activity continues to really keep going. This particular sunspot area is getting very active along with this one, but especially 3790. So Aurora watchers, stay tuned, keep track of things because there's going to be more activity with this sunspot region in the coming days and week ahead. Also, another thing, we may have two, yes, two tropical storms or hurricanes or one or the other affecting the Hawaii area over the next seven days. This first one is predicted to take a track like this by the weekend. This one's predi is predicted to take a track like this just right behind it. Anybody going to Hawaii? Keep an eye on the weather there. Here, back on the mainland, we are looking at the precipitable water looking like this. So patches of brown, patches of white and green. And so that's where you're gonna see most of the showers and thunderstorms today. Colorado, Montana, down here in Northwest Mexico, a little bit out here in the plains of the Eastern Dakotas. So the thunderstorm coverage is gonna pull back a little bit today, but this moisture is gonna surge back to the north. That's gonna get thunderstorm activity going again as we go on into tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. Here's the Pacific Northwest trough pushing cooler air into the Pacific Northwest coast, but the clockwise circulation around the high will keep the heat east of the divide. The circulation, the clock, counterclockwise circulation around the low will push cooler air slowly into the Pacific Northwest. This is by tomorrow. This is by Saturday. Notice the low doesn't move too far, but it does settle into the Pacific Northwest. So this is gonna cool off this whole part of the U.S. right here, west of the divide, Saturday and the Sunday. But it's pushing up against this big high, but the high does get pushed a little bit more into the south central U.S. What we're going to see by Monday is that system pushing into the northern plains and the northern Rockies. Notice it weakens because it's kind of a battle between these two, between the low and the high. So the low does weaken, the high weakens as well. So instead of the low digging down into here, it's going to go more eastward. But as it does so, it's going to drag cooler Pacific air into the northern plains and northern Rockies by the weekend. So you're going to see a significant cool down in this part of the U.S. right here along and west of the divide through Sunday. As we mentioned, if you're west of the divide, you're going to feel this front much more than east of the divide through Sunday. But the frontal boundary will produce showers and thunderstorms as it pushes on through. The high gets pushed more to the Midwest and the Great Lakes. Speaking of tropical activity, the Western Gulf by late this weekend and early next week, likely gonna have a tropical storm or hurricane. We'll watch that as well. These are the temperatures by Saturday. Look at that. Where you see purple, that's a pretty strong deviation. So from Los Angeles to Seattle, to Boise, to near Salt Lake City, and even into Las Vegas, gonna cool down this weekend while the heat is right in the middle part of Canada and the US. You can see the combination of the systems will keep the cool air west of the divide there. This is by Monday. Notice the cool air kind of weakens a little bit, but it does spread out and gets a little bit further east. The heat now going to go into the Midwest Corn Belt and the Great Lakes on into the other side of the US. As we get into Wednesday of next week, we have another one of these Pacific waves come through. It takes a track along the US Canadian border. This will drag a cold front. This will bring in cooler air behind it for the middle of the week. Also probably drier Canadian air as well. And there's your cool front coming through on Wednesday. So after steady temperatures here for the next four to five days or so, 
we're going to get some ups and downs in those temperature readings. Have yourself a good Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow.